primary recap, were there any any surprises uh, to to the point um, of you know the stay? I mean, I wasn't really surprised about the, the way the uh, primary for governor turned out. At yeah, all. no, I was I was not surprised by the result. Um, I was kind of surprised the tone it took the last week. Um, you know, there was that state mailer um, in New York City that basically kind of questioned whether or not Cynthia Nixon might be anti-Semitic, which seems crazy. And I just thought, wow, I mean, people must think Cuomo's really in trouble, which I didn't get that sense all along. So um, that, I guess, kind of surprised me. But I think the happy news, which I was pleasantly surprised. I don't want to say it was a surprise because this is the way it should have been, but in my in my view. Um, but this breaking up of the Independent Democratic Caucus is excellent. So a lot of these senators who have been in these questionable dealings trying to curry favor with the majority, because for people who don't know, we have a Democratic Assembly, but we have a Republican majority Senate. So there were a group of Democrats who split from the Democratic Party, who otherwise would have had a majority, and basically um, sold out to to the Republicans in order to keep some very questionable practices afloat, including some campaign finance stuff and the LLC loophole. So I was incredibly pleased to see that people are on to them and that six of the eight of them lost their primaries. So unless they might appear on the ballot on an independence or um, none of them are on the working families line, but they might have secured another ballot line, Mm -hmm. but the chances of of them actually retaining their seats are very low. And I say, good well-deserved um, comeuppance because they had not been conducting themselves in good faith for the for the people of the state. So I think that's good news for us locally because better state government will lead to better local decision making. Um, but yeah. So the as you're going through talking about that, um, I had found this. Uh, I think it was like a day or two. The New York Times published this uh, uh, story. Five takeaways from. Uh, the primary involving Cuomo and Nixon. And, and the, the quote here, as you can see on your screen, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, Cuomo kept it old school. It worked. Uh, he had the unions. He had the money. He had the television ads and mailers. She had the buzz. She had the celebrity. She had what seemed like the grassroots energy. She got crushed. Um, it, to me, that's that sort of sums up where state politics is right now. Well, but and I, I, I get it. Yeah. Like there's a lot of hope that, OK, things yeah. are changing. Things are going in the right direction. Right. But guess what? It just happened. We watched it happen. Sure. But, you know, I would also say the big piece there is he's an incumbent. So I think that it was less about Cuomo's election strategy and more about the fact that incumbents have an advantage and Let's not forget, he has been appearing and peppering funds throughout the state, setting the stage for a lot of goodwill that carried into this election. Right. And and I think the, the point that, at least the point that I was thinking about was like, you know, if an incumbent doesn't have money, doesn't have the millions and millions of dollars that Cuomo had, are they as effective as Cuomo was moving through this past primary? Because it seemed like the writing was on the wall that if there were ever going to be a time to knock him off in this type of mm-hmm. in this type of contest in a primary contest, this was going to be the year for it to happen, right. and for it not to happen, and not only not happen, but for it to be effectively a blistering outcome. Right. I think she secured, you know, a little over thirty four percent of the vote, yeah, um, matching what uh, Zephyr Teachout did in twenty fourteen. Um, that to me says that you know. For all of the progress that a lot of a lot of people, I think, hope we're making, right? I don't think nearly as much has actually been made. Yeah, I also think um, her candidacy was not ideal. So if you, it, yes, this was probably the best year for someone to to mount a primary challenge. Um, I don't think she was necessarily the best candidate to carry that forward. So. 
I don't want to say that grassroots organizing didn't work this time or that there wasn't enough change in the air. I think it was in some ways a personality contest and I think in some ways um, it was about momentum. And did she make a compelling enough case that we needed to break the momentum? And frankly, on some issues, absolutely yes, but I don't think enough to tip the balance. And that, I don't know, that's my assessment of why. But who knows? I mean, maybe you never know. You never know what motivates people when they're in the voting booth. Now, what about the uh, AG's race? Um, any, any change there in terms of were you happy, content, interested, uh, by the outcome or how things shaped up in that uh, contest? Well, I definitely think everybody got the down ballot advantage of being part of Cuomo's team. I was disappointed that Zephyr Teachout did not win the attorney general's primary because um, I thought without a doubt she was incredibly qualified and actually had the statewide knowledge to be able to be a really excellent representative of state interests across across the board. Mm -hmm. So that I felt was disappointing. Um, but I think the top of the ticket got most of the attention. So you can't really fault people for going with the names that were associated with the top of the ticket. Right. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, one of the big takeaways that I was sort of thinking about afterward um, and kind of wondering, because it was one of the things that I thought I was going to take away from the primary before it actually happened, um, was this whole debate around how, how much uh, did this primary contest actually prepare uh, Governor Cuomo for his, his challenge in the right. general election. And you know what? I, I think I feel even more strongly than I did before the primary about it not doing anything good in any way, shape, or form for him heading into um, the general election. It seemed like he moved um, the way the party wanted him to move throughout the primary process and direction as far as latitude on the on the issues. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he 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 looked like a, a beatable candidate throughout the process. He may have had the, the money in the war chest and the, the political um, chips in the right spots to win this primary contest. But the general election is much different. And, you know, I just think to myself, what? what would this have looked like if it were a stronger, more for, more formidable candidate um, that were placed before uh, voters in this primary process? Right. So a more similar to Cuomo and less like Nixon yep. candidate, a, a more central um, Democratic option. I think Cuomo could have been beat, and I think that would have been a real preview for what voters probably want more than anything, at least as far as the, the general uh, feeling goes. I think there's a little bit of desire for something more stable or something more um, less to the polls. Yeah, well, I think that what people would... Uh, I think Cuomo's vulnerability right now is um, articulating a plan to actually implement some reform on this corruption end. That is an incredible vulnerability. I mean, Cynthia Nixon would not have gone for that if she didn't recognize that that was going to resonate with people. I think across New York State, especially in upstate, I think people have been starting to get tuned in to the fact that stuff going on in Albany is not in our interest. Um, so while economic development awards and other revitalization efforts are good and should continue, um, I don't think those monies are going to be enough in general to distract upstate voters from their bigger concerns about how the legislature has been governed and particularly how that has affected things like school funding. And again, I, I've said I think Molinaro, being a county executive, is going to be able to talk about that in a way that people will actually understand and will see the impact. I think Cynthia Nixon was good at kind of pointing out the problem and and calling Cuomo on the carpet about a couple of things, but then there wasn't an alternative proposal that right. people could understand how it would affect their daily lives. 
I think Molinaro and definitely Stephanie Miner, who you know, full disclosure, <laughs> I think would be a great candidate, great governor. Um, you know, I think that they are going to be able to say, and here's how it's going to work, and here's what it's going to look like for your school taxes, for your um, unfunded mandate payments, you know, for workers' comp, for these things that people deal with every day and have to wrestle with, especially this time of year when your school and property tax bills are coming due. Right. That's the issue. Yeah, people see people see all of these all of these political issues as management issues, and I think that's probably why we saw the rise of a Donald Trump and to presidency because there was this perception that he was the businessman, he could manage, he could uh, create plans and do and whether it was right or wrong is pretty much irrelevant when it, it's just a reflection of what the pulse of the voter is at this point. Yeah, I, I hope mean, you're not showing my face right now. <laughs> but it, it's, it goes yeah. back to the point that it, it's a very basic fundamental thing that voters are looking for right now. They aren't looking for the political flash or anything you mm-hmm. know, too exciting. They just are looking for basic answers. And to that point, what you just said, I think it's spot on because I, I do think that a county executive, somebody who has that management experience, is poised to be in a really good place in a a contest against Cuomo.